Thank, thank you, Bibi. I'm actually going to focus a bit more um, on the you know, potential benefits and some of the challenges around using this value chain approach that includes um, agriculture, nutrition, and health, and looking at it very much from the standpoint of, of an organization that's involved in large-scale uh, program delivery in the nutrition sector. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, GAIN, uh, which is the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition, was created about 10 years ago as a multi-sector platform to develop large-scale nutrition programs, mainly focusing on undernutrition and uh, trying to uh, address not only micronutrient deficiencies, but increasingly stunting and underweight. We focus mainly on uh, uh, large-scale food fortification, but also uh, getting complementary foods on the market for children 6 to 24 months, and have uh, programs in about 25 countries that reach 400 million people. So looking at it from this perspective, I think there are really a number of uh, potential benefits uh, that I can see from using this, this kind of approach. And, and first of all, I think one of the things that we're seeing as we're trying to get impacts in nutrition, that by leaving out the whole issue of access and availability to food, it's, it's really sometimes quite difficult to actually understand the impacts that we're getting, and particularly as we're trying to drive indicators like stunting and underweight. So from an impact side, I think the value chain approach really make, makes a lot of sense. But also, I think as we use this, uh, look at the value chain approach, there are some real trade-offs if we actually look at interventions more comprehensively. You know, for example, where we have been able to roll out large-scale fortification programs or programs with micronutrient powders uh, where we have deep market penetration, should we really be investing in those same places in, in launching new crop varieties or biofortified crops, uh, which have you know, a lot of additional costs? Um, I think at the same time, a benefit of the, the value chain approach from our vantage point, maybe it might be in a more effective way of leveraging the private sector. I think in the nutrition area, we've really challenged, been challenged by how to make the private sector uh, act in a, a more positive way in addressing malnutrition. And given that most people buy their food in the marketplace, we've recognized in the nutrition area, if we can't get the private sector on board, we really will have great difficulty in reaching the billions of people that we're trying to reach. <clears throat> and we've mainly focused on, uh, with the private sector, from the point of getting products on the market to reach particular target groups um, that we are we're trying to reach, and with mi with mixed success. Um, whereas I think what we find with the private sector is a lot more interest in looking at an approach that you're, that tackles their whole supply chain. And this allows us to actually leverage not only those who are working on the product development, but all the way down to the farm. And I think this will be one of the new big benefits of trying to, to look at the value chain with the private sector who, who are interested in the whole proposition around ending malnutrition. But perhaps one of the most compelling reasons to use this, this approach is really in terms of uh, consolidating some of the efforts uh, and taking advantage of some of the, the comparative strengths and avoiding duplication that happens between particularly the, the agriculture and uh, nutrition sector. Um, if I'm looking at it from a, from a gain uh, standpoint, uh, just a few uh, ideas. I mean, one, one thing that that gain established a few years ago was a procurement facility to procure micronutrients for uh, pro food processing, and it's been fairly successful, but what we've seen is, um, as we present, as this has been developed, is that we've had been approached by many in the agricultural sector to say, you know, the challenges we face in terms of getting micronutrients into fertilizer or for animal feed are the same ones we have with human consumption, huge price uh, fluctuations. Uh, major issues around quality. So these same, this is an example of a facility that could be easily used across 
a whole value chain. Another example is in the area of innovative financing mechanisms, where we've set up a number of innovative financing mechanisms to support the production of fortified complementary foods and get them on the market. Whereas you see uh, other organizations like Agra setting up similar finance, innovative financing facilities, and these are loan, debt, equity kind of uh, facilities to support small farmers. Well, none of them actually, none of these facilities can get to enough scale on their own. And so actually combining these facilities along a value chain could make quite a lot of sense. There's quite a number of other initiatives focusing on food safety, demand creation, advocacy, you know, large-scale baseline surveys that are all that are happening quite independently uh, in the nutrition area from what is going on in the, the ag sector. So there, there is really a lot of potential benefit if we could harmonize some of these efforts along a whole, a whole value chain. There are two other key benefits I'd like to highlight. One is that you know, one of the things gained uh, as an alliance builds uh, uh, national alliances to bring together key stakeholders who work on malnutrition. Those are every, all from including uh, millers to food companies to, uh, to, to a range of government bodies from standard agencies to ministries of rural development to ministries of health. But we never include the ag uh, people in that equation. And you quickly come to discussions in these kind of platforms around food prices, around the uh, food availability, and then the discussion kind of, kind of stops there. So I think that we could see a lot of benefit from having broader platforms that bring these, these groups together. Perhaps the, the, the more important, and it's the last benefit, I think is a lot of support to national policy making in nutrition has, has taken us to say that we really do need to have an integrated food and nutrition security strategy at the national level. And I think the value chain approach kind of begs that, that perspective, is how do we integrate these two perspectives into uh, structures and policies at the national level? So those are some of the, the real benefits that this approach could, could, could yield. But I think maybe just to say there are a lot of challenges here to make this work in, in practical sense. Um, there, these, you know, the agriculture and the health, nutrition health community do live in very different silos. And to, to you know, I agree training is going to be one important uh, 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 way of addressing that, but I think back, and BB may be smiling here, but I think back to the early days of, of our support to NEPAD and, and CADAP, uh, the CADAP program, trying to build nutrition into CADAP, and uh, I think BB would go off to the regional economic community discussions with the permanent sectors of agriculture to agree on the priorities, and nutrition would come up number 25, I think almost close to the bottom after keeping youth on the farm. You know, and it was very difficult even within uh, regional groupings like SADC to bring health ministers with agricultural ministers together. It just doesn't happen. And that translates at the national level. And it also translates into the donor agencies. The donors, uh, the, the the groups in donors who work on health or global health and, and agriculture rarely engage. So there are some very real uh, limitations there that, that need to be overcome. I think the, the, the second one is, is that coming up with common impact measurements that would combine measures of lives saved or livelihoods improved with economic growth, productivity, or return on investment are very complicated. You know, can we come up with these common metrics to, to measure performance? And I guess the last point is just trying to operationalize at the national level integrating nutrition and food security into, into one approach is highly complex. I mean, we spent uh, Gainsport at the process in South Africa for the last few years, and you find you have, you know, um, six ministry, government ministries, many, many stakeholders, and it's a highly complex model to put together safety net programs with activities that drive food prices. Uh, and so I, I do think it's not so, so straightforward. But to close, I think 
there's a lot of opportunity to try and work on this model. I think a lot more investment needs to go into developing the model further. There is a process that myself and a few others are part of through the World Economic Forum, um, Global, Global Agenda Council on Food Security, which is looking at this more at how do we develop this on the, at the global level. But I think it's really at the country level that we really do need to invest in some pilots to see can we start to design this new uh, a, a agenda around the value chain. Thanks a lot.